What is the number one thing I regret doing with my Etsy shop? What is my number one Etsy tip? And how do I create two to three times more revenue without creating a much larger workload? Also, if a listing is old with no sales, will it hurt your shop? In today's q and I am covering all of those questions and more. These questions all came directly from you guys. You sent them over on Instagram and you guys have a lot of really juicy questions. So let's jump into it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jaris and I am an Etsy shop owner of almost seven years. I've sold over $1.4 million in revenue on the platform, over a million dollars in profit. And my entire background is in corporate e-commerce. And now I teach Etsy sellers just like you how to grow a multi six figure Etsy shop through my program, the multi six figure Etsy blueprint. So last week I put out a thing on Instagram asking for questions. And today I'm going to do the Q and A part one, answering all of your questions. And I'm not skipping anything. What is one thing you regret doing with your business? I would say hands down, it was holding on to production all by myself for so long. I'm a bit of a control freak and I held on to production for the first like six and a half years. I really should have trained someone in on production when we hit that 100,000 mark for profit, but I waited until we were over $300,000 in profit to even get someone trained in on production. I really held our business back by doing that and that is my one regret. Are you going to do an investment property real estate course? This is interesting. If you kind of know my story, you know that we invest all of our Etsy cash flow. Well, not all of it, but we invest a lot of it into real estate and most uh, recently multifamily real estate. I would say my husband might do a course on that. As of right now, he will be getting out of the military in about two years. It'll be around the 15 year mark, which I know people think is crazy to get out before 20 years. But at this point, you know, it really doesn't make sense for him him to get out of the military and go get a corporate job where he's making, you know, $200,000 a year because he can really contribute so much more value than that to our current businesses. And he has this real itch to do his own thing. Real estate is one of his big passions. And I could definitely see him going deeper in that arena and maybe taking a course or getting a mentor. But for right now, he is a huge fan of the bigger pockets. That's where he's kind of doing a lot of that education right now. Okay. If a listing is old with no sales, will it hurt your shop? If a listing is old with no sales, it may hurt your shop if you don't take any action on it. So having a ton of dead listings does not help you, but it is still very likely that 80% of your sales will come from about 20% of your listings. So it's that 80, 20 rule. So I don't think that you can completely ever avoid having slow listings in your shop, but for completely dead listings, you definitely want to revamp these so that you completely exhaust their potential. So I have a bonus module in my program all about product ideation. And there's a lesson in here about when to give up on an idea on a category or product that you are selling in your your shop if it's just not selling, but we really want to exhaust the potential of it and really milk it for all it's worth before throwing in the towel on a listing. And a lot of times it just takes repackaging with new marketing. Okay. Someone asks number one Etsy tip. My number one Etsy tip is to work longer and harder than all of your competition. You really have to be willing to keep pushing forward beyond when everyone else quits and you have to keep testing, keep trying. And if you are doing Etsy for the purpose of easy money, I guarantee you will not make it big. You really need to thoroughly exhaust strategies before jumping to the next one. This is the number one reason that I see people fail because they don't have the endurance and the stamina to work harder and longer than your competition. I've always said, you know, I may not be the smartest person in the room, but I want to be the hardest working person in the room and working harder does not mean that you're also not working smarter. You want to do both. How do I earn two to three times more without a much bigger workload? The number one answer to this is hiring and outsourcing. So if you are not sure what to outsource first, reach out. I cover this in a lesson uh, right within my program, multi six figure Etsy blueprints. It's a lesson called outsourcing and when to make your first hire. And I cover this in the module. That's all about the marathon strategy. So that marathon strategy is that point in your business. When you have gained traction, you're getting daily sales. You've hit your income goals for, you know, three, four, five months. And now we're pulling levers to scale. So part of that scaling is 
pulling levers and one of those levers is labor. So someone asked, what are the benefits of having a business credit card? And I'm texting my husband this question right now because he is the credit card guru here. In terms of the benefits, there are so many. I was honestly not bought into the whole credit card points thing until we started taking these you know, $10,000 vacations and not paying for anything outside of the rental car. So definitely follow the points guy. But if you are running, you know, a 300 to $500,000 a year business, you likely have some business expenses and you might as well get the benefit of having those expenses by paying for them on a credit card. So obviously pay off your card every month. Do not be racking up debt here. So what we like to use these business credit cards for is travel perks. You can literally travel for free. My husband has really learned the skill of transferring travel points between cards and between airlines to get everything fully covered. Not to mention, you know, all the airport lounge access, you know, these free $100 credits to different websites, things like that. So we have the Amex Business Gold card. We use it because it offers the best balance between bonus points categories and earning a transferable points currency. And that transferable points is what allows us to maximize our redemption value. And we do that by either redeeming the points for cash or transferring them to an airline's frequent flyer program. At what point did you feel ready to invest in a property? I just made $110,000 from Etsy in 2022. So we invested in our first property in the first year that we did Etsy, closed on that home in 2017. That year we did $134,000 in revenue on Etsy. But because we only had one year of revenue from Etsy, it didn't really help us in qualifying for the home or anything. At the time, my husband was also bringing in about 175 and it just made sense. Interest rates at the time were 2.25%. So we were 26 and 28 years old. Some mistakes we made here was we should have done this much sooner since we had the VA loan where we really didn't even need to put money down. The second mistake we made here was we put about $250,000 down on that house and it was about a $554,000 house. So some big lessons learned from that. And from that point on, we invested in another single family home in 2021 and then a multifamily property in 2022. So the timing of those was really because we just had way too much cash flow coming in from Etsy and we were already doing a lot in the stock market. So our current plan is about one property a year at least just to put the cash flow that we're getting from Etsy to work. And right now we're actually looking into that short-term rental property investment just as a way to take advantage of accelerated depreciation since we are not real estate professionals. What can the view to visit ratio tell us about our listings? So the view to visit ratio is really how many people are seeing your listings in search results versus how many people are actually clicking on the those listings and you want these to be as close as possible. If these are drastically different, then it means that people thought you weren't worth clicking on, which is likely a problem with your value proposition, which is that combination of your listing photo, your price compared to the competition. So if you are getting a ton of views and hardly any visits, it means that people are having the opportunity to see your listings and they're choosing not to click on them. Here's the question. How long did you work in e-commerce? So my entire career after college was was e-commerce. So first I worked for Zappos um, where I started, you know, as like an assistant buyer, worked my way up to the buyer level. And then I moved to Zulily where I was a buyer and that was up in Seattle. So it was between Las Vegas and Seattle with Zappos and Zulily. And I did that until, you know, my later twenties when I started on Etsy. And then after Etsy, you know, I, I went into Amazon and Shopify. Is a digital product for small business owners with having variations and customization a good idea? Yes. You know what? You can actually do variations with digital products on Etsy, even though Etsy says it's not set up to do that. If you need help with this, definitely feel free to reach out. Here's another question. What is the most efficient way to reach customers? I would say this is a combination of SEO and the Facebook strategy, and also tightly aligning with what profitable customers actually want versus what you might kind of like yourself. I'm new to business credit cards. What do I need to know? The right business credit card really depends on what you are spending on, what categories you're spending on, and what benefits you want. Different cards will reward you for different spending categories. If you're in my program, check out module five, the lesson on business entity must haves. And I cover business credit cards there. Another question. Do you offer a military spouse discount? Okay. So I am a military spouse. Interesting question. There is not actually a standard discount that we offer in our program for different categories or segments of people, but we always try to work with you on an individual basis with payments that really fit your needs. I have a new product line. Should I open a second 
shop. So I would want to talk to you before giving you a concrete answer here. But in general, something that I see is that sellers are just way too quick to open a second shop, a third shop, a fourth shop, and it really does dilute your efforts. So I would really, really think two times, three times before doing that. I always say if your customers that you're targeting are not in opposition, do what you can to put them in the same shop. And by opposition, I always use the example of farmers and brides, right? Those customers would be very hard to fit into the same shop. But if your customers are not in opposition, I do what you can to keep a single shop. Tags, long tail, short tail, same as title, or specifics, hidden SEO like image names, etc. Okay, so tags. Yes, this is where SEO matters. And what I will say here is consistency is key. I do cover this very in depth in my program. If you are interested in more SEO help, do you think newsletter marketing works for Etsy sellers? Some Etsy coaches say that email marketing is very important, but I have found that unless you have time to be consistent with some type of a newsletter, it can really be a waste of time to distract yourself with this. There are much more profitable ways to be spending your time. So if your goal is to build you know, a cult-like following a community while driving sales, there are much more profitable ways to spend your time to do that. So long story short, sometimes I think email marketing for Etsy sellers can be a big distraction to actually driving sales. What about recommendations like never try to edit or improve listings that have some sales? This is not at all true. The thing is you just want to make sure that you're only making changes to the parts of the listing that are not helping it get sales. So you can tell on the back end what SEO is working for a listing and what SEO in that listing is not working for it and not helping it. So never change the good stuff that's working for it, but definitely replace what's not working. How do you scale your Etsy from $10,000 a month to $40,000 a month? So this is all about pulling levers. So there are so many levers to pull on Etsy, um, ranging from your product mix, your pricing, personal personnel or labor, your marketing strategy, your costs. I call this the marathon strategy. Uh, it's really the long game and scaling. And I have a whole module all about this in my program, Multi Six Figure Etsy Blueprint. What to do with not selling items that have been in the shop for a while should I create a new listing? What I would do is repackage them with new marketing, new listing photo, evaluate your pricing strategy, and you can renew the listing or you can copy it to a new listing in that repackaged way. How does your faith come in as a multi six figure business owner? This is a good question. I really feel like God has given me talents, but also wisdom in knowing how to pull levers to build something big. I really believe that it is my duty to be a steward of those talents, not to just sit on them and kind of keep them to myself. And I also feel like it's my duty to fully execute on the capabilities and the, the abilities that I have. And really there's not a huge difference in in, you know, life when you're making $100,000 a year or $300,000 a year or $500,000 a year. We don't really experience that lifestyle inflation. We, we live pretty much the same as we always have. But I realized that this financial blessing is, is huge and not to be taken for granted. But while right now, you know, we are very financially blessed, this has really come on the other side of some huge struggles, just some huge tragedy as well. If you know my story and you've watched my video, which I will link here, you've heard, you know, the tragedy that I've kind of experienced with my dad and my sister and having the opportunity to, you know, not only build this multi six figure business, but to help hundreds, literally hundreds of people build that for for themselves is just such a gift. And I really feel like I'm being a good steward of what God has given me. Why do some people have more than one Etsy shop? So a lot of times Etsy sellers will get stuck more on niches than on customers. And they will kind of get backed into a corner with a niche or even a micro niche where they feel like their shop has to fit this tight, tight theme. Creating multiple shops is really not the path I would recommend. Your efforts will be diluted. If you end up with three different shops, you're putting in, let's say 33% effort into each shop. Well, you're going to get 33% of the results for each of those shops. Whereas you're going up against competition who's putting in 100% effort into to their one shop and they're sitting right next to you in search results. Personally, I would want to go 100% all in and not back myself into a corner by focusing too much on niches or um, tight, tight themes and instead focus more on customers and serving that customer for at least four to seven years of their life so that the lifetime value of that customer is thousands, not just a one-time $20 transaction on something that's you know super tightly niched. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here and there's going to be 
a part two of this video, of this Q&A, because there are about 25 more questions that you guys have. They're really good ones. So please subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to be notified about the next videos that come out. If you are interested in any one-on-one -on -one help with your shop, definitely reach out to me. I'm on Instagram at Dylan Jaris. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.